Take out the opener and their mounting parts. A 20AWG three-core cable must be purchased separately for the infrared sensors. Disable the door locks and remove any ropes attached to the garage door. Lift the garage door halfway up and release it. If balanced, it should stay in place, supported entirely by its springs. After testing, close the garage door. The garage door opener can be installed on the left or right side of the garage door. Select the side that meets the listed requirements. There must be a minimum clearance of 3.6 inches between the wall and the center of the torsion bar. There must be a minimum clearance of 8.5 inches between the side wall or any obstruction and the end of the torsion bar. There must be a minimum clearance of 3.2 inches between the ceiling and the center of the torsion bar. The torsion bar must extend at least 1.5 inches past the bearing. An electric outlet is required within 3.6 feet of the installation area. If the outlet does not exist, contact a qualified electrician. For detailed drum size and Wi-Fi signal requirements, refer to the user manual. Slide the coupler with the larger end fully onto the motor shaft of the opener until it stops. On the same side, Install the slotted side of the mounting bracket, partially tighten the bolts, slide the coupler onto the end of the door's torsion bar until it stops. If the torsion bar is too long or damaged, you may need to cut it. Ensure the coupler does not touch the bearing. Use a level to ensure the torsion bar is level. If the torsion bar is level, Use a level to position and vertically align the garage door opener. If the torsion bar is not level, ensure the garage door opener is perpendicular to the torsion bar using a digital level. Adjust the bottom of the opener and the mounting bracket. The back side of the garage door opener may be installed parallel to the wall or at a slight angle of inclination. However, a parallel installation is recommended. Fully tighten the mounting bolts. Mark the installation position of the mounting bracket. Mount the bracket on a solid surface such as wood, concrete, or a door bracket. If mounting on drywall, you must anchor it to a stud. This demonstration shows installation on a concrete wall. Remove the garage door opener from the torsion bar. Drill two 0.4 inch wide holes at the marked locations. The depth is about 0.4 inches longer than the expansion tube. Drill through metal door rail plates if necessary. Hammer the expansion tubes into the holes until they are entirely embedded in the wall. Slide the garage door opener back onto the torsion bar. Align the drilled holes with the mounting bracket. Secure the mounting bracket to the wall using the two M10 by 50 millimeter screws. You must first screw in the four bolts in order a to B to C to D, then tighten them in that sequence with an adjustable wrench. For a hollow torsion bar, tighten screws three quarters to one full turn after initial contact with the bar. For a solid shaft torsion bar, tighten screws one quarter to one half, turn maximum after initial contact with the shaft. For a keyed torsion bar, never tighten the screws into the keyway. Plug the garage door opener into a grounded outlet. Insert the emergency release rope through the hole in the release cable. Adjust the rope length. Ensure the emergency release handle is within reach, but remains at least six feet above the floor, avoiding contact with vehicles to prevent accidental release. Cut the rope if it is too long. Secure the end of the release rope with an overhand knot. Pull the emergency release handle until you hear a click, disconnecting the door from the door opener. Ensure the door can be opened and closed manually. Pull the manual release handle until you hear a click, 
indicating the door has reconnected to the opener. Hold PROG until the display changes, entering travel learning mode. Check the motor direction by holding up. If the garage door opens, press PROG to confirm the motor direction. If the garage door closes, press CODE to reverse the motor direction. Hold up to open the garage door until it reaches the fully open limit position. Press PROG to confirm the opening limit position. Hold down to close the garage door until it reaches the fully closed limit position. Press PROG to confirm the closing limit position. Finally, the motor executes a complete cycle automatically. The motor first opens the door to its set limit position, then closes the door to its set limit position. Test the remote control. When the garage door is closed, press the button. The garage door opens until it reaches the limit position. When the garage door is opened, press the button. The garage door closes until it reaches the limit position. The remote control is prepared at the factory. If it does not work, pair it by following the steps below. Press code. Press the button on the remote control. Press the remote control button again. The receiver should be installed on the same side as the opener. Prepare the mounting locations for the infrared sensors as shown in the diagram. Determine where the receiver will be installed. Remove the covers. Mark the receiver's installation position. Drill 30.24 inches wide holes at the mark locations. The depth is about 0.4 inches, longer than the expansion tube. Hammer the expansion tubes into the holes until they are entirely embedded in the wall. Align the drilled holes with the mounting holes on the receiver. Secure the receiver using the body fixing screws. You may wire it first, then install the receiver. On the opposite side, determine the transmitter's installation position. Secure the transmitter with double-sided tape. You may wire it first, then stick the transmitter on the wall. After testing, drill and install it permanently. The infrared signal cable must connect to the 12 volt, pH, and COM terminals. Note that the physical locations of these three terminals differ between ZUG1 and ZUG3 models. Wire colors may vary, but terminal connections must match. Prepare two 20AWG cables, a two-core cable for transmitter to receiver, and a three-core cable for receiver to control board, or both are three-core cables. Wire the transmitter. Remember to pass the cable through the wiring hole. Wire colors may vary, but terminal connections must match. Wire the receiver by first passing the cable from the transmitter through your routing conduit. Then, feed the cable through the wiring hole on the receiver. Remove the bottom cover. Remove the jumper wire. Wire the control board. This video demonstrates the installation on the ZUG3 control board as an example. Wire colors may vary, but terminal connections must match. Reattach the bottom cover and infrared sensor covers before testing. Use the remote control to open or close the garage door. 
Then have a person walk between the receiver and the transmitter to test the sensor. The garage door should open automatically. If not, adjust the transmitter's position, then test again. Remove the transmitter's cover. Mark the installation position. Drill three 0.24 inches wide holes at the marked locations. The depth is about 0.4 inches, longer than the expansion tube. Hammer the expansion tubes into the holes until they are entirely embedded in the wall. Secure the transmitter using the body fixing screws. It's recommended to install the rubber sealing ring to enhance waterproofing. Reattach the cover. Secure both covers using the cover fixing screws. It's recommended to install the automatic door lock on the same side as the garage door opener. Make sure the garage door is in the closed position. Choose one of the door rollers, preferably the third one. Make a mark two inches, 50 millimeters, above the roller's top position on the door track. It is recommended that the lock bolt of the lock be located two inches, 50 millimeters, above the roller. Use the remote control to open the garage door. Peel the backing off the position label. Align the center of the lock bolt hole on the label with the mark. Then center and apply the label to the track. Drill holes according to the diameter size indicated on the label. Be sure to file down any sharp edges. Align the lock with the three holes. Use screws to secure the lock in place. Turn the knob to check whether the lock bolt can be extended and retracted properly. Remove the bottom cover to expose the control board. Pass the cable through the rear wiring hole of the opener. The positive and negative wires of the lock must be individually connected to the corresponding positive lock and negative lock terminals on the control board. Wire the lock to the control board. Close the garage door. When it reaches the limit position, the lock bolt automatically extends and locks in the track. Use the remote control to open the garage door. The lock bolt automatically retracts before the garage door opens, and then the garage door opens. Install the wireless wall control in a location convenient for your operation. Remove the cover of the wall control. Mark the installation position. Drill two 0.24 inches wide holes at the marked locations. The depth is about 0.4 inches, longer than the expansion tube. Hammer the expansion tubes into the holes until they are entirely embedded in the wall. Secure the wall control using the fixing screws. Reattach the back cover to the wall control body. Press the button to open the garage door. Press it again to close the garage door. The wall control is prepared at the factory. If it does not work, pair it by following the steps below. Press code on the display panel. Press the button on the wall control twice. When the panel displays two in dashes, it means the pairing is successful.